Welcome to the Allen County Junior Fair Recap Show number two. Have you seen number one yet? If not, make sure you make a note to go back and watch it. But first, sit back for the next 30 minutes because we have more interviews, more recaps, more memories, and a lot more fun. WTLW continuing their coverage of the Allen County Fair. I'm Patrick Hamler with a couple of the Payne sisters. We've got Lexi and Lydia here with us this year, and we have the Pork Industry Princess. First of all, I want to ask you about this. So how do you become the Pork Industry Princess? Um, you just fill out an application and put what you're involved in and your age, and then you get selected. So. so I could have been the Pork Industry Princess. Is that what you're saying, or is there a little bit more to it? Uh, you have to be have two years of experience in the project and that's it so so theoretically I don't want to be but I'm just saying it's the, the sky's the limit sure <laughs> just have a little bit of fun so tell me about how your week at the fair has gone so far it's a little bit different of an environment it's not quite what you you girls are used to how are you enjoying the fair so far um, it's been pretty fun even though there's not as much going on we've still been pretty busy with bringing in different animals and different shows tell us about some of the projects you have been involved in here at the fair? Um, me and my sister show pigs and chickens, and me and Lexi show cows. So there's four of you combined, right, that are involved in it. So how, how do you split the duties? Who gets to decide who does what, who takes care of what? What, is, what does that look like in the Payne household? I'll ask you first. Well, we all have our individual animals, so we just kind of take care of our animals separately. And then if one of us needs help, we usually usually help each other out so yeah. um like if we're if one of us is struggling with our pigs or our cows they come out and help us and yeah so how did you get involved in in doing this um well our friends did it and my dad wanted us to show rabbits but then my sister begged him to show pigs so we decided to show pigs now you've done pigs. Now you also mentioned that you guys are doing cows this year. Is this is this the first time, or have you guys done cows for a while? Uh, this is our first time bringing cows to the fair, but we had some ones that we just raised at home for just free reserve beef, and we would sell them off. But me and Lydia convinced my dad to let him bring us to the fair to let us bring them to the fair this year. So we took them. So this is our first year bringing them to the fair. So what makes a good pig? Uh got lots of muscle in the front and back, tall, walks its feet straight, not like throws them outside of its skeleton, and then sound, pretty stout too. You say pretty snout too? Stout. Pretty stout, okay. Pretty snout, that's a new one. I haven't heard of that one. Is is, is showing a cow kind of a, a similar process? I mean, obviously not the snout part, but are you looking for some of the same things? Um, I don't really know how to judge a cow, but I mean... I guess. <laughs> See, my experience with judging cows involves what it looks like on my plate. That's really the experience. So you're ahead of me in, in, in that regard. Ladies, congratulations and best of luck to you. Enjoy the rest of your fair. Thank, Thank you. you. Stay tuned and you'll meet 10-year-old Logan Smith, who brought her pigs to the fair this year. But first, we'll jump over to the rabbit area. Chloe Zellman is the 2020 Rabbit Queen. She also took four special interest projects, placing first in three out of four, and mentors new 4-H members. Meet Chloe. I've been in 4-H for eight years now. I've been taking rabbits for five years, and a typical year looks like um, I will have special interest projects. So right here in the building we are right now, we will have our special interest projects. We will have our booth set up, and we will have all of our projects displayed out I take various special interest projects such as leadership projects. This year I took leadership um, two, club leadership two, one-on-one -on -one and public speaking, as well as a mental health project. I got first place in three of those. Um, and then my rabbits would typically be down in the rabbit barn. I do all of the shows possible, so I'm very busy. When I started 4-H, I was a very shy person. You can't believe that now. I'm rabbit queen. I would, if I was the person I used to be, I wouldn't have been able to go through the interview process. I wouldn't have. I would have froze. I wouldn't have been able to answer the questions. I, I wouldn't have made it this far. It has taught me leadership skills with all of the leadership projects I have taken. 
it has taught I'm a cake decorator now because I didn't know that I had those skills it taught me those skills it has taught me how to handle animals that I never thought I would handle it has also connected me to more of my family that I never knew what I would connect with like my aunt Morgan she was the Allen County princess in 20 I want to say 2017 um, and she sh did rabbits for years and her dad grandpa Ron he helped me for many many years I think it's good to be a mentor because I have learned so many things in 4-H that I wouldn't have known without 4-H. I wouldn't be the person I am today without 4-H. My advisor right over there, she taught me one thing. There are two different kinds of people in 4-H. Either 4-H needs you or you need 4-H. When I started, I needed 4-H. I, I was a, a turtle in a shell. I was so shy. And now everyone says that 4-H needs me because I have taught people so many skills. Before rabbits became the prime focus in this building, dogs had their opportunity to shine. Lindsay Rowland was among the many contestants. Her mom nominated her for a 4-H spotlight interview and says Lindsay is part of Junior Leaders, Barn Busters, and Paws and Pals group. This year, she showed a turkey and her dog. She would have shown market chickens, but lost them due to wildlife in the country. Lindsay's mom, Kim, says her daughter is a hard worker with a goal to be a vet. In addition to 4-H, Lindsay is also involved in dance, cheerleading, band, choir, and softball, and is on the honor roll. Take a moment now to enjoy some additional spotlight pictures submitted by 4-H parents and leaders. So I did a shotgun project, which is a shooting sports project. Uh, shooting sports projects are different in the way that instead of projects that they're giving you ideas of what you can do, you actually have to think up of, well, I want to try to distinguish the gauges of shotgun shells or something. So this year for my project, I did how you would combine a trap and a skeet range. So I did the trap in blue, skeet is in red, and then right here, so you have the trap right here, purple is where they're touching, and then you have all the skeet. Uh, trap and skeet are different in the way that trap is going away from you. Skeet is actually coming across your field of vision. And then I decided, hey, let's go a bit more with this and actually make a entire model. And this is to scale. It is every one eighth of an inch equals a foot. So you have your trap house that would be shooting out. And then the skeet houses, the low, low house and the high house. And so these are shooting across. You would stand all across here, and then, probably can't see it very well, but these little squares. Then right here, right here, and then in the center. Well, I actually 
had to learn the patterns that come with a shooting ski. As far as uh, when these shoot out and what they shoot out when they shoot out the clays. And then I had to learn a lot with using software to make it to scale. And I think that was one of the funnest things I did. Still to come on our Allen County Fair Recap Show Part 2, a look back at the Dairy Showmanship and the Dairy Steer Show, as well as the Champion of Champions. But first, we talk with 10-year-old Logan Smith and her dad. So this is a duroc and that's a hamp, that's a gill and a barra. We've had to walk them, we had to feed them right, weigh them, and fill their water and stuff. Uh, this is her second year doing the pigs, and um, it has really showed her a lot of responsibility. Um, you know, it forces the, the kids, not only my daughter, but all of the kids that, that are in 4-H to, um, you know, they're, they're taking care of a, a living project. You know, they, they have to make sure that the, the, the pens are kept nice and clean. Um, they have to be fed and watered the way they're supposed to be and it really puts a whole nother perspective on uh, work ethic. They're friendly and they like to walk and they're nice. Congratulations to Logan for finishing fourth in her show. If you'd like to find the list of the top place finishers at this year's Junior Fair, visit the Allen County OSU Extension on Facebook. Speaking of those top finishers, Let's take one last look back at just a few more before we put the 2020 Junior Fair officially in the history books. All right, for beginning showmanship with our final heat, uh, we had to get them all situated here, but uh, I think they all do an excellent job again. And, and to start off the class, there's really not too much of a difference, I don't think, in between either one of these two. Um, they're both up here in first and second based off of how they're holding the animals. I think if you see, um, they really keep the heads up nice on these two calves, and that's you like to see that because it makes their frames look better, it makes the calf look better, and it really just gets their attention. And both of them do an excellent job with that um, out here in this showmanship uh, uh, a class. Um, advantage today, I think we'll just go with this young lady here in first on the rear set of feet and legs. I felt like there was more times, especially over there before I started placing them, that she had it just set up a touch better. Um, but it is really close and it's picking a, um, really kind of picking a little bit uh, nitpicky type stuff with the, uh, between the two of these. So they all, or they both do an awesome job keeping the head up, walking them around the ring and they follow each other really uh, closely in a nice pair to start off your beginning showmanship class. Um, and then we go on down the line to third place with this girl. I think she did an awesome job as well uh, with this really big steer out here. I mean, she's got a huge steer that she's showing around the ring, um, and it's pretty hard for her to keep that head up uh, to go with the frame with how big he is. But you could tell she knows what she's doing when she's showing. She holds that halter correctly. She works with the feet uh, constantly trying to get those feet right. Um, so you like to see how much she's working with this guy out here and showing. You can definitely tell um, that she's done a lot with them just because of how well he behaves with her. Um, and then the fourth with the young gentleman there, um, I think he done an awesome job as far as the information. He told me some really good stuff and, and he actually moved around the head and the neck really good today and gave me those angles that I was liking to see when I was moving around him. So um, for fourth overall, I think he did a really nice job as far as moving around the head and the neck and showing this animal. And he's lining things up now. Is he down to two? It looks like it. Okay, he said they're not officially placed, so he's just throwing another test at them, seeing if they would get flustered thinking they lost. Oh, now that's an interesting that's, aspect. He was, he was testing them, seeing if they gave up or not. 
Now, is that something that they would have anticipated or would that be a surprise to them? A lot of these kids with having shown for a while and knowing that this is the final drive and it's going to be, be tougher, a lot of them would have saw that coming, which I was looking over there and none of them gave up. They just kept right on it. So they all passed that test, it looks like. It just seems like there's a lot of mental focus and mental strength that is required in order to do what they're doing right now. 100%. It's, you got to multitask. You got to know where the judge is at. You got to keep your calf looking the best at all times. It gets stressful out there. <laughs> All right, uh, for our overall showmanship, I don't have them placed in the center. I just pulled them in to give them one more look, see if they will kind of stand better with them being in the center there, um, and then we'll finish. But I'm going to announce it over the microphone. I told the two young ladies there against the fence over there that they could relax a little bit. I think they both do an excellent job as well um, over there, just kind of how they're keeping the heads up. Um, and, and when I'm actually showmanship, since this is the final, I guess the biggest things that I look for um, out here, and I, uh, hopefully we've kind of seen it a little bit, but uh, we're looking at how they're holding the halter, how they're holding the head up. I really like, and, and it's best by preference by me, that you get the hand somewhat close to the halter because I feel like that gives you better control of where that head is going, and you're able to keep that head up nice with them if they're used to it. If they're not used to it, um, then they, they tend to fight you with a little bit if your hand's too close. So you got to get them used to it, um, but that gives you a lot of control um, over the calf when you are close to it. And then I look at the legs. How square are the legs? Do we have them nice and square? I don't care if they're one way or the other, right or left, but I do like to see them nice and square to where they're not too stretched out um, and not looking too bad. And then again, I think uh, maybe one of the things that I've really kind of looked at here um, today in the show is how you're moving around the head and the neck. Um, a judge, when you're looking and comes around the front, he's coming around the front for a reason. Um, so that's where you got to switch your attention from the feet and then switch your attention to the front of the animal to make sure that um, that judge can see that front of the animal. So I think that was one of the areas that maybe uh, um, hurt some of the students out here or the kids out here showing, um, just making sure you show that uh, front of the animal. So, and I know there, some of them are dancing a little bit um, out here along the, the fence. They were dancing a little bit, I think, maybe just kind of seeing people and getting a little bit nervous or something. But uh, the kids are doing all a really nice job showing these animals and working with them. Um, for overall showmanship, it comes down, I think, to the two uh, ladies here closest to me. Um, I felt like they do an awesome job out here. Um, but for me, overall, we're going to go with this girl with the red and white Ayrshire there. She's going to win our showmanship. I'll give her the slight advantage over the young lady closest to me to my right. Um, just based off of how she kind of operates that animal around the head and the neck of them. And I think uh, at times she's maybe just a touch quicker on the setup today. Um, and I'll give her that advantage in a really close placing between the two. Um, she's extremely smooth as far as how she moves around the head and the neck, the spacing that she gives. And like I said, we'll give her a slight advantage over this young lady here with, uh, that's right in front of me um, for a second overall. So she wants to pull that black and white whole scene out. I feel like she follows that same pattern. She does all the same things. She holds the halter correctly. She moves around the head and the neck of the animal. And she tries to get those rear set of feet and legs pretty quick. Uh, for third overall, we're going to go with this uh, next young lady with the red and white calf there. I think she, again, follows that same pattern and how she's moving around the head and the neck. She holds the halter really nicely um, and then does an awesome job as well. Now entering into the show arena, the winners from each of the six classes of the Dairy Beef Show from Class 1. The winner was Anna May of Delphus Livestock, Class 2. Kara Schwartz, Blue Ribbon Bearcats. Class three, Grace Flutterjohn of Blue Ribbon Bearcats. Class four, Isaac Henschen of Blue Ribbon Bearcats. Class five, Riley Harriman of Bluffton Cattle Club. And in class six, again, it's Riley Harriman of Bluffton Cattle Club. Again, we're watching the grand champion final judging round of the Dairy Beef Show. Riley Harriman 
with two animals out here, Isaac Henshin, Grace Fletterjohn, Kara Schwartz, and Anna May, your winners from each class in today's show. All right, for our champion uh, drive of the uh, fat steers out here, we have the six class winners. And I think really uh, quality wise all the way down. And again, uh, when we're looking at these, we do want the steers that are uh, that have the muscle, have the width, have the strength, and are finished out today. Um, so when we go out and we select our champion overall, that's kind of what I'm looking for. Um, they don't have to be the best in the frame, but it is nice if they do have a nice frame with them, um, a correct frame with them, and they and they have to have a, at least a decent size frame to be able to put all that weight and muscle and quality on them. Um, so I think we had a couple steers throughout the show today that had the muscle weight and thickness, but maybe just didn't have the, the actual size of the frame to go along with it. Um, so when we look at all of these, that's what we're kind of looking at. Is the frame big enough? Um, is, and then do they have enough width and strength and finish all the way throughout to be ready to uh, for that next stage there? So we'll go out, we'll select our champion, and I do believe we're doing top eight um, all the way down, so we will go from there. Schwartz, your grand champion in the Dairy Beef Show here at the <laughs> Allen County Fair. Congratulations to Riley Harriman, reserve champion in the Dairy Beach Show. Grand champion Kara Sports, reserve champion Riley Harriman. All right, for Grand Reserve, I really like this uh, uh, steer that I chose for Grand. He just catches your eyes. I don't think you're going to find too many holes in him. You get over top of him. He's so wide. He's so strong. He has that width. He has that strength. He carries it all the way through his chest floor, and he has that all the way back through his rump structure. And then it just uh, actually, when you look at the frame, you love the frame. Uh, for reserve, it gets really close with a couple of the other steers out here, um, I think. But this steer is, the, I think, the best finished steer we've had in the show today. Really like the finish that he has. He's he's big enough. He's uh, you like the frame. You like the width. You get over top of him. You love the width that he has as well. Um, so for his overall proper finish, he's going to be our um, reserve champion over the next one that I'm then going to pull out. Hopefully, scores will be finalized here momentarily and they can figure out who is our champion of champion today. And we'll remind you again of who we have out here uh, representing each department. Montana Hillsmeyer, the meat goat department, Devin Foster, dairy, Michaela Cosart, poultry, Anna May, dairy beef, Derek Clay, horse, Casey Carroll, 
dairy goats, Keegan Jones, hogs, Delaney Jones, beef, Peyton Hawker, sheep, and Haley Prine, rabbits. You're watching our live stream on WTLW.com, sponsored by Allen Davis Insurance. We want to remind you that we will re-air this tonight at 8 o'clock on TV44, and perhaps you'd like to have your own keepsake version or keepsake copy of this, and that is absolutely possible. You can purchase a DVD by calling our office at 419-339-4444. Indicate that you'd like to order the Champion of Champions event. It'll be about a one-week wait, costs $20 plus tax, then you can have your very own copy to keep for years to come or maybe buy one for grandma and grandpa. Send it off to them. Did hear from some grandmas and grandpas, by the way, who've been very appreciative of all of the live streams. You know, TV44 has provided live streams, but then there's also been uh, the Farm Bureau and other entities, a lot, of, a lot of streaming going on all week long to let the public see what's happening. Yeah, there was definitely <laughs> no shortage of challenges i guess to to make this happen you know you're dealing with the fairgrounds that spread out like this and getting quality uh internet and quality sound and so we appreciate those that were patient as we kind of worked through some technical difficulties with a couple shows but yeah, lots of great feedback from all over the country. Uh, you know, uh, kids that are going to college out in Iowa that were from Allen County got to watch their brother or sister or, or uh, you know, kids that are moved away to New York, uh, you know, have still have a connection and said, yeah, hey, it's kind of like being at the Allen County mm -hmm. Fair. Now can you maybe mail me uh, some French fries or something to go with it while I watch? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it, it was definitely a, a great way to showcase these uh, – young individuals well, here are the results for the champion and champion showman in 10th place from the horse department Derek clay in ninth place from the dairy department goat department casey carroll in eighth place from the rabbit department haley prine In seventh place from the swine department, Keegan Jones. In sixth place from the dairy beef show, Devin Foster. Dairy department, sorry. There's a tie for fourth. In fourth place from the dairy goat, dairy meat goat department, Montana Halsmeyer. And from the dairy and from the beef department, Delaney Jones. <laughs> In third place, from the poultry department, Michaela Kosar. Your reserve champion showman is showman is Peyton Hawker from the sheep department. And your champion showman is Anna May from the Dairy Beef Department. That concludes our 2020 Showman Show. Thank you for attending. And congratulations to Anna May, finishing first place in the Champion of Champions. This has been our broadcast of the 2020 Junior Fair Champion of Champions event, brought to you by Allen Davis Insurance, your solutions provider with locations in Wapak, Minster, and Lima. For Nick Fraley, Wayne Getz, Kelly Getz, Sarah Jackson, Clint Schrader, I'm Jennifer Beck. Thank you so much for joining us for this live broadcast on TV44.